Hello, everybody, and happy Sabbath. It's good to see everybody, and I love being here. Love seeing everybody's face, and I hope and pray that we start filling the fuel, the pews more and more as this COVID virus hits the basement somehow. We get God to get it out of here. That more people will come back in our congregation. But for the ones that are here, I love it. Okay. Let's bow our heads for prayer real quick. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for everything you've given us. Lord, we ask that through this message that you give us clear and concise understanding with your word and of your word. Please leave your Holy Spirit and give us your Holy Spirit so that we can have clear and concise understanding of his word and that this message will make sense to everybody. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're in a new year, 2022. You know, I look back, I think, you know, uh, back at the 80s and 90s, or, or back in the 80s when I went to college, when I went to high school and everything, I looked ahead and I would never believe that I was going to be in the year 2022. <laughs> it's just like that was just so far off and here it is just like that you know and uh, uh, how's it feel for you guys I mean did you look at back in the 80s or the 70s and look and go wow will I make it to 2022 and uh, one of the reasons why I bring that up is because we've had the last uh, 20 years of our lives have been pretty pretty rough if you look at some of the um, things that we've gone through from 201 to 2021 starting with the disaster we had called 9-11 we had four planes in the air overrun by terrorism one of them crashed lost some very good people in a field in Pennsylvania. Thank God for the people that were on board that brought that plane down safely, or not safely, but into a, a field instead of into someone, someone's uh, living quarters or a big building, such as we saw in New York. And then we had uh, the Pentagon was dead. And then we had the two towers in New York City. And I bring this up because, I mean, we're looking at a horrible tragedy where we lost over 3,000 people. 3,000 lives and just billions of dollars in destruction. But it doesn't get any better. 2003, we had a terrible heat wave rampant across Europe. 72,000 people perished. It's 2004. Y'all remember the Asian tsunami? The Asian tsunami was a huge disaster. A 9.0 earthquake on the Richter scale. Third largest quake ever recorded. A tsunami with waves recorded as high as up to 100 feet in the air. Destroying everything in its path and killing 700,000 people. Injuring millions. And I've left millions of other people in a distressed state. 2005, Hurricane Katrina. Touches my heart because I lived in Florida at that time. Um, August 2005. The only reason that we didn't have the mass lives lost is because our nation, being the nation that it is, has a lot of good things put in place for warnings. Most nations don't have things like that. So we had billions of dollars in damages with Katrina, and people were left homeless, and it was just a total disaster. And uh, But fortunate, we only lost about 1,800 people. Was that 1,800 people, and that was a huge, huge hurricane. Then 2005, the earthquake, the Kashmir earthquake, killing 73,000 people. Killing more damages, people misplaced and out of their homes. I mean, the, 
costliness, 2008 tropical cyclone uh, Nargis killed 138,000 people. 2008, we had an 8.0 in Sichuan, China, we had an 8.0 earthquake on the Richter scale. 70,000 people killed, more than 18,000 people missing, and 18 million left homeless. 18 million left homeless, that's the equivalent of a whole state of New York. Ugh. Then we looked at Haiti, 2010. A 7.0 earthquake killed 316,000, injured 300,000, left a million people homeless. 2010 Chile, an 8.8 .8 earthquake, sixth largest ever recorded. Many, many lives lost, billions of dollars in damage. 2011, Japan, Northwest uh, Japan mainly, a 9.0 earthquake, a huge tsunami, killing over 15,000 people, injuring thousands, and it caused a major nuclear disaster. Then it hit home again, 2012, up our eastern seaboard, seaboard. Hurricane Sandy, once again, we were prepared for it, being the nation that we are. But we weren't prepared for the largest hurricane ever, ever recorded. Didn't lose a lot of lives, but it did millions in damage. So you say, what's your point, Tim? Well, my point is that Jesus is coming again. Amen. And Jesus said, I am coming quickly. Watch. Watch. See, I haven't even gotten to the next 10 years because that's homework. Nobody likes homework, but make it a little game on your drive home. Think about the disasters that have happened, the intensity of these disasters that have been happening in the last 10 years. I'll start you off with one. COVID. How's that? I took the easiest one. It's your job to come up with some other ones. Now you might say, Tim, 2018, there were stronger hurricanes in 2004. Yes, you might have in different years, different weather patterns and things like that that were a little calmer and others. I'm talking about a whole, guys. I'm talking about a 20 year period, this last 20 year period. You either gotta be really ignorant to the fact or you have to be buried under a rock for these last 20 years, not to see a major difference in what's happening in our society with the weather patterns and things like that, with humanity, okay? I've named those. I haven't even gotten to the fires, the tornadoes, the floods, the droughts, famines, the pestilence, the rampant violence, nationwide school shootings. Home invasions, carjackings, gang warfare, horrific, horrific, horrific worldwide drug epidemic that's taking the lives of our loved ones. And it's almost like we just don't have any help or any way. The worst part is the dividing of us. Something has driven a wedge between the people of this world. Instead of love, we hate one another. People are hating one another. Democrats are fighting for Republicans over the most ridiculous stuff. You know, Muslims are killing Christians. Christians are, I mean, it's just the division. The division is unbelievable. So what do you think tonight when you go home? Think about the crazy stuff that's been happening. You know, in Luke 21, 25, he talks about men will, uh, men will fear one another. Men will, their, men's hearts, what the hell did it say, Pastor Ben? Men's hearts will, will give out because of fear. And what, what is our, yeah, 26. Read that for me, Pastor Ben. Men's hearts failing them from fear and expectation of those things which are coming upon the earth. 
for the powers of heaven will be shaken. Yeah, men's hearts failing of fear. Does terrorism put a fear in men's hearts? I mean, we don't know if we're gonna to have to go to war and fight the terrorism or if it's gonna end up on our back porch, kill our family and friends. The point I'm trying to make is, throughout these things that are happening, and I've mentioned it before, you have to be blind by ignorance or be, li be living under a rock for the last, you know, 20 years not to see the increasing momentum that's happening in this world. And uh, people say these are acts of God. God did this. They blame God. However, it's those same people that forget about God when it comes to gay marriages, abortion, no public prayer in school, no Ten Commandments in our courtrooms, nor our schools. See, they seem to pick and choose when they can bring God in and when they can push him away. Okay? It's not the way God works. We know that as a, as a family in our church right now. That isn't the way God works. But I must say that all these things that have happened, and you see social media, people talking, you see the news reports, you see the, the newspapers, and you know what I don't ever see in those? I never ever one time have seen anybody or anyone in those, those medias say this is due to evil. This is due to the devil. See, they're quick to point the finger up and at you and at you and at God, but very, very rarely will they point it at themselves. Very, very rarely will they point it at something that's fighting us every single minute of the day in a spiritual war, the devil. You know, God didn't cause one single uh, calamity. Amen. We, humanity, we caused this. We brought it upon ourselves through the rejection of God. As we claim his name in vain, witness his word falsely, turn ourselves, uh, or turn to ourselves instead of, and, and one another, turn to ourselves and one another instead of God, and we continually reject him altogether, he slowly, slowly, with long suffering, pulls away his perfection. These last 20 years are eyebrow raisers. The things that have happened in them are unlike the, the rest of the world has seen. We're talking about the highest intensity of earthquakes, the highest intensity of snowstorms, the highest intensity of droughts. We're talking about, it is really, really going. And it's going hard, guys. And if we take a look at God, God will never quit loving us. Amen. See, his pulling back of his protection isn't because he doesn't love us. It's because we reject him. Amen. If we're not going to take his hand, he can't do anything for us. He's a just God. He has laws that he abides by. He wrote them. He has to keep them. Otherwise, he's a liar. And God's no liar. Amen. You know, it reminds me of a story in the Bible. There was a time when God had to pull back his protection because everybody rejected him. It was a time when he long-suffered for 120 years and he preached and he said, Get on the boat! Get on the boat. Get on the boat. And still the people badgered and giggled and laughed and said, Noah, you are crazy. And Jesus Christ preached through Noah for 120 years. Get on the boat. 
and they didn't get on and the flood came and took all but eight of them away God pulled back his protection because they rejected him gives me another story in the Bible Job Everyone know? We'll put some cliff notes on Job. I'll give you the, the once over here. Job, man of God, faithful man of God. Lord, one day he holds a council meeting in uh, heaven or somewhere in one of his worlds. The devil shows up. The sons of God are there. And as God looks around the room, he gets one of these. What are you doing here, Satan? Well, I was walking to and fro on the earth and I kind of figured I deserved to be here. That's my world. And he says, well, have you overlooked my faithful servant, Job? He says, ha, ah, Job, he's only that way because you give him everything. And God says, okay, I'm going to play that game. I'll tell you what. I'm going to pull back my protection on Job. I'll take away my little heads, but don't you dare touch him so what happens the protections pulled away the devil you give him an inch he's going to take a mile what's he do goes in and wipes out Job's family he wipes out his livestock he wipes out everything that Job owns doesn't touch Job and you know what Job does he gets down on his knees and he praises the Lord and thanks him thanks him for who he is thanks him. You are my God. I will not forsake you. I love you, Lord. And then the devil comes back to another meeting and goes through the same thing. What are you doing here? Well, came to talk to you about Job, you know. Uh, I know you want, you think he should be here, but again, he didn't curse you, God, because you know, he didn't let me, uh, you didn't let me really, you know, you, you let me destroy his property and stuff, but you didn't let me do anything to him. God says, okay, you got the green light, but don't kill him. So what Satan do? He puts Job through misery, boils, pain, sores, rejection from his own wife, his friends, Curse God and die, Job. Just, you know, there's no reason. No reason to hang out. This is horrible. God did this to you. Job, what did he say? Exactly. I trust the Lord. He would not do this to me. But see, this is an example I'm giving you with these two stories about God being able to pull back his protection, but as he pulls back, his arm gets longer, holding it out so that you'll grab it and love him. He's always got it out. He'll never quit loving you, Amen. but he has to pull back that protection because you are rejecting him. And the thing is, when he does that, the devil steps in. And the point I'm making is the last 20 years, have gotten stronger than the previous 20 and stronger than the previous 20. And they're going to continue. They're going to continue to get stronger and stronger. And we need to know the word of God. Amen. We need to see the deceptions that the evil is going to pull. See, we've got, we've got um, what I would call getting off track here a little bit um, but what the heck we've got what I would call you know the spiritual demons here that are guiding us up down, the, down these tracks down these roads and it's going to come to a point where there is a Sunday law that is going to say or be brought in because they're going to say that, you know, this earth, the things that are happening here are because of, of us. 
we've rejected God, we need to give this day, we need to give the earth a day of rest, and we need to get back to God. We need to do this on his, on his holy Sabbath on Sunday. <clears throat> <clears throat> Hear the buzzer? That's a wrong answer. Sabbath is not Sunday. Sabbath is Saturday, the seventh day. But they're going to want us worshiping on Sunday. See, it's not about worshiping on Sunday. It's about they don't want us to keep the Sabbath. So as time good keeps going on and on, and they can't, they can't get us to quit worshiping on the Sabbath, and they see the earth not getting any better, they're going to start pointing the finger at the Sabbath keepers and saying it's us. So now they're going to find divides that way where we won't be allowed to worship on the Sabbath. How will they do it? I don't know. They could do it. They could do it by saying, hey, look, Saturday is the day that you can get your food and your medicines. And if you don't get them, you can come back next week, but you're going to have to do work to earn your privilege back to get your meds or your food or things like that. Well, I'm not working on a Sabbath. So I guess if I don't go shopping to get my food and medicine, and then the next week it comes about, I guess I'm not going to have food and medicine. But there's going to be a way where they try to get us to stop worshiping on the Sabbath. It's not about a Sunday worships per se. It's about not keeping God's word. It's about disobeying his Ten Commandments. It's about worshiping on a day that is a false day, a counterfeit day. And keeping us from keeping the fourth commandment, the Sabbath. Let me get back on track here. You know, God, God has a time clock on the nations. Not only on them. He's got them on nations. And right now we're going through... Uh, through it, including God's faithful people, uh, they'll go through it. Even the remnant people are going to go through this. So you can look back through the Old Testament. You saw that God gave, the prophets gave people warnings. And they gave them long enough warnings where they could repent. They could turn back to God. Are we seeing that as what we could do right now with these catastrophes? See, there's they had catastrophes that would come, but they always could repent. And they were given that by prophets prophesizing to them what was going to happen because God wanted them to have an expected end. And when they didn't turn to God, God did justly. He obeyed his own law, and he, he, he has to. He has to. He has to proclaim judgment. And he proclaimed it on not only the people of Judah, he proclaimed it on the people of Babylon. He proclaimed it on the people of Assyria. He proclaimed it on the Egyptians. I mean, hey, God loves everybody. And he's given everybody a chance. The Israelites were a nation that was supposed to shine the light on the people, take God's word and, and shine it so that other nations would see the blessings that they had poured upon them. They failed to do so. So God did what he had to do. He pulled back his protection and the devil stepped in and things happen. Those are the same things that we're looking right down a gun barrel at right now. And I, I, I preach this today so that we don't get caught with the deception. See, we got to know what is in this Bible. We have to understand that the Bible that we read, this Bible right here, we have to understand that's 100% truth. You either believe it all or you believe nothing. There's no contradictions in it. The contradictions are things that you're confused about, that you need help from other people, that they will straighten it out and teach you. Okay, so if you have confusions and things like that, there's people available. Pastor Ben's one of the best ones that can explain pretty much everything in here. He's helped me immensely. But getting back to what I was talking about is that the devil is taking his mile. The Lord is pulling back his protection. Jesus is going to be coming again very soon. Deceptions are going to be played out. And if you don't know God's truth in his word, then you will be deceived. And if you're deceived, 
then you will lose the things that you're working for. The things that you want. The things that God has promised to you. God doesn't want to lose anybody. God doesn't want to see anybody perish. He loves everybody. But I'll tell you what, if you're not going to do his will, and you're going to reject him, and you're going to claim his name, which I'm going to read again right now. I'm going to read this again because I love this verse. I love it because it keeps me thinking that I need to stay in my lane with God. And it's verse 4 of Isaiah, chapter, or it's, uh, chapter 4 of Isaiah, verse 1. And I read it last week, and I'm going to read it again. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man and say, We will eat our own food and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by your name to take away our reproach. So in the first, how it starts out, and in the in that day, seven women, what are women, women in prophecy? Churches, right? We'll take a hold of one man. Who do you think that man is? Jesus Christ. So we have churches. We've got, now seven's the number of completion. So we've got a complete church, an apostate church, as we can say through the context. Would everyone agree with that? It's an apostate church shall take hold of one man and we'll eat our own food. Now what is food in the Bible? The word of God. And we will wear our own apparel. What is clothing? What's the owner wearing our own apparel? What does that? Our own righteousness, our own character. We will carry our own character, not the character of Jesus Christ, who this book teaches that we, sh we need to do. But they're saying, whoa, in those days, we'll eat our own food, we'll wear our own clothing, meaning we will, we will look at the Bible the way we want to look at it. We will act the way we want to look at it, but only we'll call ourselves Christians. Right there. Chapter 4, verse 1 says it better than you can ever see it. Let us be called by your name, Jesus. Let us be called by your name. Let us wear what we want. Let us eat what we want. Let us spread the word how we want it. Let us do what we want to do. Only let us call you by, let us call our names, let us call us by your name. Let us call us a Christian. Now, folks, you can't call yourself a Christian. If you're going to call yourself a Christian, you got to be a Christian. If you can't look in that mirror in the morning, and if you see Jesus' face, I want you to picture his face looking back at you. And when you look in that mirror and you're looking at God himself, I want you to look at yourself and I want you to tell me, is he smiling back at me or is he giving me a look that you don't want to see? Because if he's giving you that look that you don't want to see, it means you've got some work to do. doesn't mean it's the end. It doesn't mean he's got some work to do. And if he's giving you that smiling face, you're glorifying him. You're making him happy. Keep it up. Don't turn from it. Call your neighbor and teach them something. Witness to them. Hey, i got to tell you something. I love God. I want to share something with you about him. How can I, can I come over to your house and talk to you? I call my friends all the time. Some good, some bad. But you know what? I'll never give up on them. Amen. I'll keep praying for them. Because I want them in the kingdom of God. Amen. You know? There are some, I, I don't want to start crying when I say something like that, but there are some people that I love so much that I'd be like Moses and I would say, God, take them. If there's not that much room, Lord, take them and leave me behind. Because I don't want to see them lost. So,
the Bible teaches right now that we're coming. Jesus is coming. We're coming, and he's coming quickly, and we're coming towards the end. Be prepared. Don't be deceived. It's in the book. If you need help studying the book, I'll be more than happy to sit down with anybody and explain anything. And if I don't know, I'm sure that I can ask Pastor Ben, and he'll teach me, and I'll teach you, or we'll get together and do it. But it is so important that we know what the deceptions are to come, that we see the signs that God is giving us. Jesus says there'll be wars and rumors of wars. There'll be pestilence. He wasn't kidding. We're seeing it right now. In the times. These times are in front of us. So let's dig deep. Let's dig deep and depend on one another. Let's share with one another the importance of knowing the deception, the importance of knowing the Lord's word. Because when we do, we're going to lay our head down on that pillow and know that if we don't wake up, our next sight, our next breath, we'll be seeing the Lord coming in the clouds Amen. to get us. Amen. So let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for allowing me to present your word. Your, your words, Lord, not mine. Lord, we ask that whatever I've said today, that our congregation and the people who might watch this on video, that they are able to remember and be blessed by your word, Lord. I thank you so much in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.